Hello, internet. people. It's Hello, man. internet. My name is Billy Safe Long. I'm not ready. This is Be by Its Greatest Video Game Podcast, Easy Mode Ultra, episode uh, 19. I don't know what episode we are on. 18? Yeah, this is 19. 19. This is 19. No one updated the doc. I tried to. It, I the notes read 18, 19, whatever. You didn't do your job this week, Billy. God damn it. Shit. Is my computer plugged in? <laughs> oh, I'll be back. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, well, shit. Wait, what? Just bring it back already. Oh, shit. Oh. Why is my TV not working now? I don't know. <laughs> Everything's crashing. Oh, my God. Anyways, I'm gonna, my name is Billy, as always, your host for Easy Mode Ultra. With me today is Steven. Hey. Uh, Furman is standing by as well. Don't look at me. <laughs> and, Hayden, and Hayden just crawled up there. I'm melting. I don't know what Hayden's doing, but I think we have a pretty good show for you guys today. Um, we're going to talk about Day of the Devs, which just happened in San Francisco, I think, like, what, two days ago? Saturday. It was on Saturday, right? yeah, yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Today is the 9th, so if you're listening to this, Day of the Devs most likely already passed. Um, actually, that's the only way it would work. Yeah, it totally <laughs> passed. <happened. laughs> yeah, it's passed no, way, no matter what. Yeah, it's passed no matter what. Yeah. Um, Look at the doctor and you're listening. Another thing that also has passed oh, is... Uh, Another thing that's also passed past is uh, N7, Mass Effect Day. Mm. And um, with that being said, we're going to start the podcast, how we start every podcast, and that is with the dump. Dump, dump, dump. We, we need to have, like, some vocal choir. I want to go over and chant. That supplies it right there. That was a no, weird, that was a weird follow, pause. In honor of Fallout, uh, have like the voiceover um, by Ron Perlman saying "War never changes," but except you dub over and say "Dump never changes." <laughs> dump never changes. Right on. So there you go. Just real quick, first story on the dump we have is the Mass Effect Andromeda teaser. They did a teaser like last year at E3, I think. But mm -hmm. yeah, this did. one, really this fun. one, it's really just it's like the the most teasiest of tease things. And it's basically just Jennifer Hale, the voice of Fem Shep, um, talking right. about everybody, you know, basically signing off and saying it's, you know, it's your turn, goodbye, blah, blah, blah. We already made three games with this character. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this character. Apparently, I read that she's uh, she's canon and not the not the man shepherd. So what? Yeah, really? yeah, that's what I read too, and I'm totally cool. You with know, that. I'm really surprised that they would actually like kind of uh, dismiss other people's playthroughs though. That the Bioware usually doesn't do that. Well, considering Bioware and the the Mass Effect three team had to go back and like add different endings, shows mm -hmm. how much sort of fortitude or they have, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's just like it's kind of like the GTA five or GTA thing, where GTA actually like the reason why they have their own self contained universe is because they don't want to dismiss everyone's playthroughs. It's weird. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. They're actually, paid. yeah. GTA is a little bit different point. though. It's kind of not as serious. It's actually, it's less RPG. I feel like so they have less of a reason to. But anyways, yeah, yeah continue. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you guys play all the Mass Effects back in the day? No, I did. Yeah. I fall, uh, Mass Effect is one of my favorite series. It's so good. Yeah, no, it, it's it's yeah. such a really really wheel wheelized series. I can't wheel fucking eyes. talk. And that's what I said. <laughs> and you know what? I'm sticking to my fucking words. Baby words. Who's the guy from Looney Tunes? The the hunter. Oh, Elmer <laughs> Fudd. Um, Elmer Fudd. Fudd. Elmer, Elmer Fudd. Fudd. Yeah. He would be yeah. so racist today. I'm guessing. <laughs> he just looks like the most racist motherfucker. He Great hunter, and he Lovecraft. hunts. The, what? He'd be worse than H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, yeah, he's he really was... bad. He's, he's really, really bad, bad hunter. He's yeah, like that yeah, shitty... he is. He's like the worst hunter ever. But um, the fact that his gun can go into one hole and pop out another one is pretty impressive, though, I gotta say. That's that's that's, like, that's, that's, uh, yeah. that's, that's military technology. Yeah. <laughs> he's, got, he's got legendary uh, upgrades on his, on his shotgun. But... Anywho, what's the story? Continue. Yeah, What's Mass Effect story? Andromeda teaser. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, what would you guys favorite Mass Effect game? A lot of people say two. Oh, man. Some people oh, actually wow. like yeah. one a lot because it's the most uh, I'm one of those RPG people. people. You know, it's like mm -hmm. really hardcore like RPG kind of deal. <clears throat> what would you say, Hayden? Number one? Uh, right? no, number one, I'm one of those people. I think that uh, Mass... I love the Mako sections no matter how much shit it got. I love that, like, exploration of these barren wastelands. And they try to do that... Uh, they try to supplant that with these weird mini-games in 2. And 3, they, they try to add more exploration, sure. But I just felt like the open worlds that you were able to explore made it feel like more of a, like, space frontier game than any other Mass Effect game tried to be. Those characters and story are better than in 2. 
I don't like the ending as much um, with everyone dying. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Uh, spoilers for, uh, like, how old is the game now? Five or six years old? I don't even know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mass Effect 1, I just felt like I really enjoyed the storyline with, um, what was the, who's the villain? I can't remember his name. Do you guys remember the villain? Or number... What? No, the main villain, the the main, uh, it's not, it's... The Reapers? No, not Reapers, like, it's the guy who, like, his, he's, like, the harbinger of the Reapers, but it's not from, it's not from Mass Effect 2. The main I don't villain. Know. From, hey, I'm, who, I'm horrible with names. Who's the villain in Mass Effect 1? Mass Effect 1, uh, why can't I remember well, his name right now? Sareth, is that his name? Yes, Sarath. I think that, you're right. Sareth, okay. Yeah. Maybe Har- Harbinger a little bit. Uh, Harbinger in the storyline, yeah. Luke is here from Sugoi Squad. He's in the background. He's wearing his shirt two days late. Yeah, he's wearing the N7 shirt, which is kind of relevant. He was great. He was great segue. Yeah. What about you? What about you, Furman? Can you have a? Um, do you have a favorite Mass Effect game? I, I did. Li- I did really like number two, and that was just because uh, there was so much more with the characters, mm. and it started off some really good arcs for a lot of characters mm-hmm. in Mass Effect Three. It's kind of like. I love Mass Effect 2, but I did like how a lot of the characters' stories ended in Mass Effect 3. Mm-hmm. Um, some of those ending scenes for some of the characters were just so fucking good. I right. mean, and they broke your heart. Morden, the way, what happens to him, oh, and the very the only time I've ever emotional for Mass Effect, I feel like. Oh, life is hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and Grunt. I, 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 Rex died for me, so... What? Grunt. I don't know if you guys remember how really? what happened with Rex him. Died? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, he got shot right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he died in the number one for you or what? Yeah, yeah. Oh um, wow. That's, that's crazy. Face. Damn. Um, I forgot who shot him in the face, but yeah, there's a big old hole in it. So uh, we left him there. But <laughs> the way Grunt went out was um, the little piano music starts playing, and he just tackles that one monster right off the cliff, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, you're so fucking cool. What ending did you choose, guys, for Mass Effect 3? If you guys played I, it. I, I, I never remember. got to 3. I never got to 3. Really? I chose mm-hmm. the green ending. That's all I'll say. I like the green ending the most. I don't care what people say either. I like the green cupcake, all right? I like the B ending. The, the thing with 3 was that it was so hyped. You know, it's the ending. It was like the Halo 3 hype where it was like, finish the fight. You got to finish mm-hmm. the reverse, whatever. Halo 3 lived up to the hype. Yeah, then and Mass Effect 3 came out, and the, the controversy was so crazy for the ending that... Mm-hmm. I it yeah. kind of it spoiled me basically. I got spoiled on Akazan. I read about it because it was everywhere, and people well, were saying, hmm. you know, like, oh, you know, you everybody dies. That's basically the ending, right. um, and you can't really do anything to change that. There's another one where I guess it came back. They they redid the ending where it's sort of like they add like they, a, they added like, some like, twenty minute cutscene yeah. with like all yeah. these illustrations. That's all he did. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So I never got around to it because I I knew the ending. Um. But it a Mass Effect is really cool. It's a really cool series just because that's the mm-hmm. first game that I know of, at least the first RPG or modern RPG that has one save file carry across all three games, which is really impressive, and I don't think mm-hmm. anybody's done that yet. Um, I actually, that. I recently noticed uh, a game called Suikoden, which I talked about a little bit. I'm sure some people are aware of. They actually do that. They actually have you carry along a save. It's not really as detailed, like of course. The original ones? Yes, you carry from the PlayStation 1 to PS2. It's crazy. But is it going to carry it into number three? three? Huh? Carry it into number three? Yeah. They actually, you get a muffin uh, for that. They get a muffin. Come on, me, thank you. Another Exclusive. Phenomenal. You're not even looking at my muffin. Oh, Very nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like that's the ultimate before Halo. Uh, that was the ultimate reason to buy an Xbox of the Mass Effect series. I can't oh, believe yeah. they had that exclusivity for so long. And then the first one now yeah. it transferred to PS3. So You can only yeah. get the first Mass Effect on Sony consoles through the Mass Effect trilogy on PS3. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is kind of a weird way to do it. But, um, yeah, Steven, did you play any okay, Mass Effect? Sorry. Cool. Huh? Did you play any Mass Effect? What? Uh, I, I <laughs> just say no. Cause, uh, I, yeah, yeah, you guys know. <laughs> no, I, I, I just I, say no I, if you have it. I play no game ever, so I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I play books. That's yeah, the greatest there's... game. Any any yeah. final thoughts, uh, Furman? Uh, I didn't play it on console. Fuck you, PC. No, that's it. You, Xbox okay. 360. I actually played that entire thing on 360 because how could you not transfer your save files across that game? So right, I think no, a lot of people did. Microsoft Tomb Raider came out. I'm but yeah, sad. that's a uh, <laughs> that's another story for another time. Mass Effect Andromeda yeah, is. is supposedly coming out next year, but a I game that just see. came out by the time you're listening to this is most likely out and it's probably taking over the internet and the world. It's Fallout 4, 
And the cool thing about Fallout 4 is yesterday a tweet came out from one of the people from Bethesda. They basically wrote a fake doctor's note. Yeah, um, I saw that. Really funny, which is really <laughs> funny, I think. It's not, yeah. it's not really a huge story or anything, but it's just kind of funny to think about. It basically says, uh, to boss slash authority slash teacher slash, you know, whatever. Mm. Um, you may excuse blank, um, you know, doctor's note. And it's, like, signed... Um, it's really, it's really funny, and and yeah. that made me think about Fallout 4's this entire like marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. They've been really, really smart. They haven't done the usual like sizzle reel trailer and like um, doing like a bunch of interviews and stuff. They've been doing a lot of like weird merchandise kind of like real world things you can use, right? Just like the doctor's note. And I was talking to Daniel about this before. You can get uh, Fallout beer in the UK. I'm going to get Nuka-Cola. some. I'm going to get some Nuka Cola right. later. Today, you know, is at it, Target. It's out today, isn't it? I think it's out today or tomorrow. Oh, yeah, really? I'm yeah. gonna hunt it down. I'm gonna hunt it down too. And then you can get Fallout socks if you buy it from Best Buy and it's like yeah. all these cool things. I wish um, we had to be here because you could get wasted land. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard the, I heard the beer wasn't was so and so. Yeah, I was well, terrible. I don't care. Yeah, guys, yeah. Do you remember uh, back when the Blake interview happened? Remember the beer we had, the Valor Magulis? Oh my God! So for Team those, Magulis, it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, for those who are listening and are watching, Valor yeah. Magulis is a Game of Thrones uh, branded oh, beer, and it was God. fucking nasty. It wasn't very good. It was so bad. It was just, my roommates loved it for some. It was just like it just it was like dank. It was like it smelled yeah. like old. I, I didn't know. actually get to try it. I think it was but, just too bitter for me. It, it tasted like PBR. Perhaps blue mm-hmm. ribbon. Yeah, it's like cheap I, I beer. totally feel that. You know, PBR does not taste like dark. It tastes like soda. PBR tastes like shit. Like it, it, <laughs> yeah, that's not that, what I meant. I only tastes like soda. The PBR only, Westeros. What? It's the PBR <laughs> Westeros, right? Yeah, the PBR Westeros. The PBR Westeros. I like that. They should put that on their marketing campaigns. <laughs> PBR no, actually, Westeros. I was really surprised by uh, Fallout's marketing campaign that they would do that. I mean, I'm not going to be like really snippety because obviously people always skip school, and I, I've done it before all the time. It's like interesting to see how the game industry still like implies like, oh yeah, you should skip class to play a game. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's right. still interesting to think. Like, I'm surprised like people are complaining about that, but it's such a big game. I don't think anyone wants to put any negative controversy on it. You yeah, know? it is a big yeah. game, and reviews um, have come out for it, and people yeah. people love it. It is mm-hmm. kind of I I watched the gameplay of it. It still looks like really kind of I don't, I don't want to knock it. It's technicality, but it, it doesn't look like super impressive. But I think it's that's not the main point, right? The main point is it's such no. a massive world. You can do so many yeah, things. For for the scope um, of what they're doing, it is yeah. pretty impressive, like graphically from what they've done with Skyrim, for example. So yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm there's some of the te- textures I've seen from screenshots are really blurry, like of the Death Claw and things like that. Yeah. But uh, the amount of bugs have always been like plaguing the Bethesda games, and mm-hmm. you play it for that almost sometimes. The the bugs are yeah. part of the charm. It's quirky. They're nowhere near so. deal breakers. No, no. So with the amount, the amount, just the amount of content content itself. I mean. Fallout 4 basically just came out and said, hey, you can craft now, and then that's it. Yeah. You're going to buy the game. Hey, you that can craft. It. You can set up trade caravans between other people. Yeah. You can have your own like settlements. It's insane. You can but, have the, uh, the, what are they called, the Brahmin or the Baklavas? The, Bra- the Brahmins. <laughs> Would you call them the Baklavas? <laughs> Baklavas. I know they're not called that. My roommate used to have Baklava. I used to steal that all the time. <laughs> the still two-headed mutant Brahmins. Okay. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the, the graphical fidelity of Fallout 4, uh, a Forbes report just came out earlier today saying that uh, there's already a PC mod that you can get for the game mm-hmm. called Enhanced Wasteland Preset, and it, it tweaks the graphics and basically just makes it look better. And, basically, uh, all it does is saturate the image with like RGB. I've I've looked into it. It's not. It that, looks it's like not it looks like it does do saturation, but mm-hmm. in this article it says, let me see here. Enhanced Wasteland Preset is a graphics tweak by Raised, available to download for free at nexusmods.com. A hmm. uh, community of uh, game mods. Based on the author's description and screenshots, it's a subtle visual enhancement that adds more vibrance to the wasteland yeah, environment. So it's, it's saturating yeah. colors. It's Less washed yeah. out. Um, <laughs> I yeah. read somewhere also from another from another source that said that they added more um, more light shafts and something like that. Maybe maybe the shaders mm. are improved or something, uh, which can mean a, four mean times a different the shafts. Four times. Four. four times the shafts. Yeah. But that's Fallout 4. I think I'm I'm really curious to see like I'm not a graphics whore or anything like that, but I'm curious mm-hmm. to see what people can do cuz a blew, regular whore. Yeah, a regular, <laughs> yeah, <just> a regular <laughs> whore. I was really impressed when um when GTA Vanilla. 5 came out 
and then yeah. the, the PC mods for that made it look really, really like high end, like really, really crazy. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm excited. And the cool thing is you get you get the mods on the uh, on the console too. So yeah, I'm wondering how that works. I, obviously, they apparently um, they only approve not unlike PC, they only approve certain mods to go on consoles. Because imagine if they had something that was like game breaking or allowed you to like exit into the code of the PS4 and things like that. That'd be so you can see like. I mean, it wouldn't be cool for them, for Sony, but yeah. <laughs> I guess not, yeah. I, I know the, um, I think, what was it? It was another stupid marketing deal, but wasn't it like Xbox gets mods first and yep. then PS4 mods first. are coming later? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's There's stupid. that. I fucking yeah. hate exclusivity. Yeah, yeah dude. Reminds me of high school. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, I was so cool in high school. High school cast now. High school cast. High school cast. Yeah. I cosplayed in high school. I didn't. Who As let me do that? College. But you cosplayed. No, but I mean, in... not just in high school, but at high school. Oh. For okay. Halloween. Yeah, how I was, was your guys Halloween? I was Cloud Scribe once, and then I was uh, Squall. Hmm. hmm. You didn't get to talk about Halloween. How was it? Alright. I died. <laughs> um, I should say I was uh, in the bathroom all day. I was not, the... but I, I, was, wow. I was up until about three or four, and... Uh, there was a lot of stuff taken. I don't remember the day. You know what, though? You know what's a cool Halloween <laughs> game? Good luck, segue. <laughs> you, know what's a, you, know what's a cool, you know what's a cool Halloween game? No. Plants, plants vs. Zombies. I don't agree. It's Hell pretty, yeah. Plants vs. Zombies is pretty legit. And the cool <laughs> thing about that is you can now play your, your 360 Plants vs. Zombies <laughs> on Xbox One. <laughs> On Xbox One. On Xbox One. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Where That's when Plants is Zombies. Okay, moving on. So the hundred, <laughs> the hundred, the first one hundred uh, backwards compatible games for Xbox Ones have Xbox One has been released, including big ones: Mass Effect One, which we just talked about. Uh, Mirror, Mirror's Edge is another big one. I thought you said near. Mm-hmm. No, Mirror's Edge. I think you might know this one, Hayden. What the hell is N Plus? Oh, it's a Xbox Live arcade game. I didn't play it too much, but it's like one of those big hits, the original Xbox Live. Okay. So it's a game, okay. Shadow game. Complex. It's a game. I don't know how to describe it. Shadow <laughs> Complex is also backwards compatible. I hear a lot of great things about that one, but that's I a fantastic it. Metroidvania. Go play it. I will. Very good. And then what else is another one? Let me see. Metal Slug. I see Metal Slug here. Metal Slug. Crazy Taxi. Hell yes. Crazy Taxi is pretty dope. Crazy Taxi is not as good as Omnibus, but we'll get to that later. Earthling Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Blood, see Fable Blood 2. Rain Betrayal. Play, hey, I would recommend to play Blood Rain Betrayal, by the way. Again, another kind of like Castlevania esque game. I was actually Jim. surprised to see like Mirror's Edge on there. You know? That Why? And Prince of and Prince of Persia. I love Prince of Persia. I'm surprised by that though for Mirror's Edge. There's a new game coming out. I know. It's it just weird. I I don't know. It seems it like seem so old. Yeah, it does seem kind of old, but again, like these, most the majority of these games are just kind of like mid-tier, kind of uh, downloadable titles and stuff. Are these all digital, or can I? So I could physically put my disc in, right? Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, the process for I knew you were gonna say something, Furman. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so the process for doing backwards compat on Xbox One, if you right. have the 360 game, you put it in your Xbox One, and then it will download the digital copy of that game to your mm-hmm. Xbox One hard drive. But it works the same way as an Xbox One game, where it downloads mm-hmm. the data, but you still need a disc to play. That's the cool. disc, the disc as a, acts as a it's license. It's an authorizer. It yeah, authorizes exactly. the thing, you know. Yep, okay. yep. Which is, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that, but whatever. Wow, Call of War is. Call of Call Juarez is actually way better, I've heard, than people expected. Call of Juarez. How, how many times have they called Juarez? <laughs> well, he doesn't answer, time. so... They called him into the drug bust of New Me- uh, Mexico the other the last game, I think, right? Fallout 3 is also available if you haven't played Fallout 3. I've heard of it. it. That's a deal, actually. If you get Fallout 3 on Xbox One, you get it for free. I mean, Fallout 4. Okay. You get, you get, you get it twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gift it to your friends. Yep, yep. Fallout 6. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. yeah. I'm excited. I I, I, personally, I've been hearing rumors, this is kind of a dumb story, that uh, PlayStation 4 is going to provide some sort of PS2 backwards compatibility as well. Dude, that, that'd be sick. Um, they probably yeah. will. I mean, there's, there's, they, it's almost like they need to just to keep up with people the People that are hopeful, though. Yeah, but... um, the thing is, though, Furman, do you agree that, like, midlife... We're already in the midlife cycles of these consoles. Which Isn't is that crazy? Today. Yeah, God. we're already in the midlife cycle of this console generation. Theoretically, like, we could go for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but 
people are saying, and I kind of agree with them, like, is backwards compatibility, for me, it is, it's a huge value, because I have a huge, like, collection back there of PS2 games, mm-hmm. but, like, for most people, is that no, really that huge of a value adder? Like, will that change your de- decision between buying this console and this console when there's two generations of difference between a PS2 and a PS4? You know? Probably not. I, I think it depends no. on the age of the person, honestly, and, yeah. and what their uh, history is for gaming. Wise. Like I totally want it to happen. Obviously, I want my, but I only want it if it's disc based. Like if it's not, if it's just digital again, right. I don't give a shit. I'm not gonna like, do it. I don't care. Me personally, I I play the PS2 a lot. I do too. Yeah. So if the PS4 is backwards paddled with my disc, then mm-hmm. that's like totally like worth it. It would be so much value added to that console. Thousands of games. So I could. Even though I don't see it as, like, for a general populace being something that would sell you, I could see it for us, like, as gamers, like, oh, this is awesome, and it's really good PR, you know? Yeah, but us as gamers, we usually still have those consoles. Not right. always, but a lot of times we do, and, mm-hmm. I mean, the library, I, I still have all my PS1, well, no, I don't. I have most of my <laughs> PS1 and PS2 games, they disappear. No, right. literally, I, I would keep buying Final Fantasy VII, because it kept disappearing, and then one day I was upstairs, and I'm like, oh, look, there's three copies right there. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did that and for series. I did that for Gran Turismo four. <laughs> but yeah. would you play G- GTA four or GT four, not GTA four, on your uh, PS four? P- uh, yeah, probably because wow. GT six sucks. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Get uh, what's the, who's the creator? I can't, Yamaguchi. I can't remember yeah, his name anymore. Something Yamaguchi. He just okay. lives in a big white box with cars. They always treat those games as <laughs> such. Like prestigious. I mean, do you guys notice the marketing of that is always like this is the most prestigious game ever created? It's exactly. like, oh, it's so, no, they yeah. always bring like a freaking live car. Yeah, Polyphony, Polyphony hey. Digital is so pretentious. They, they are very pretentious. <laughs> but not tr- hey, they're great. They do good yeah, work sometimes. Exactly, but, they're they're legendary. Yeah. They for probably sure. they're, sit around they're, looking at their business cards. Yeah. You no, know, they made so much money. PS3 <laughs> generation, holy shit. And and PS2 generation. Store, yeah. Opening and closing. This is the future. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The way the way they present Yamaguchi whenever he comes out to haul out another goddamn GT game. Yeah. It's the way they Apple presents Johnny Ive whenever they talk about new iPhone design. <laughs> holy, holy shit, that's totally true. Cool. Yeah. You know? It's they like bringing up this star child that's like, okay, is he really that right? Like honestly, is he like He doesn't really say that? a whole lot. I he always put him in a very a white very very clean looking like video or something and like it's like slow pans with the cars and stuff it's so cool but yeah it's pretty pretentious are you stuff. a Forza person I or- like I play Forza because GT um the GTs just kind of seem to have gone down in quality yeah and they they kind of whatever happened during PS3 era from what I heard um, now I didn't have a PS3, but I, my cousin had a PS3, and they had like GT5 and, and stuff. And Five was really weird. There wasn't very, there wasn't a whole lot in it. I, I actually downloaded Five, which is one I don't play racing games very often, mm-hmm. and uh, I enjoyed it. But again, I'm not the biggest racing fan, so I could, I, I can't really tell you exactly what happened. But I heard it was like yeah. the lack of cars was a big deal for a lot of people, even though there's exactly. so many. Like, there's a lot. Seem- that's what I think it's kind of yeah. crazy, too. With these racing games, they're like 300 cars or whatever. The thing with Gran Turismo 5, I think they chose to choose a smaller set of cars mm-hmm. so they can make each car really, 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 really unique. Whereas Forza oh, okay. went the other route. Forza did the same thing, sort of. They chose like a smaller set of premium cars that had like all these different enhancements. And then right. your regular cars were just kind of a filler essentially. But I think Forza wins out, at least in the last couple of games, for all of its functionality with the drive avatars and all of its online mm-hmm. stuff and DLC, like free DLC packs. You got like Forza Horizon 2, got like free F- Furious 7 cars and stuff. It's just the, the marketing and the, the way they present those. It's more fun. James Cameron presents drive avatar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Forza, you guys ever pretend you're in a racing car when you're driving? Do I have to like yes. put my hair into the steering wheel? Yeah, <laughs> you have to have uh, some sort of sexual compatibility with your car. <laughs> that's right. that's what we call backwards compatibility, folks. That's, that's backwards compatibility. Yeah. What's not backwards compatibility or compatible, Hayden, is the Nintendo <laughs> PlayStation. Ooh, what, you're what right. is up with that one? Oh, apparently, so uh, apparently update. it powers up. Yeah, yeah. They uh, so here's the weird story. Daniel Diebold, if you guys haven't read, uh, go read our legacy article on how the Nintendo PlayStation redefined gaming. But enough of the plug. You don't have to though. No, you don't have to. Just go, go burn, go hack our website, <laughs> delete everything. No, please don't. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, so what happened was 
Daniel Diebold, who is the person, the son of the person who found Nintendo PlayStation, was invited to this Chinese retro gaming event for the first time. It's the first time we've ever been able to uh, play or like see this in any sort of format outside of the videos that he released online. So they finally actually got the proper cables, which were, of course, just SNES cables. I don't know why they didn't try it themselves, but yeah. I guess when you have something that expensive, you don't want to break it. Um, they got the proper cables, plugged it in, it boots up, and it even says Nintendo. It says, like, copyright Sony 1991, and it says Nintendo Super Disc. It's pretty crazy to see that like, bios crazy. pop up. Isn't that insane? Cool. So it's completely so functional. Crazy. It's totally legit as far as we... I think that, like, proves it's legit. Who knows? You could mock up anything. Um, and it plays Street Fighter 2, and it plays Bomberman 5. Like, it plays... Right off the <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Yeah. What? Aren't those it, like it, functions, uh, like Nintendo games? Yeah, they play the, the point is, if, for a, for a quick refresh. Nintendo uh, PlayStation would have allowed you to play Super Famicom games, but they would have gotten all the profits and all the licensing fees. Sony would have, and um, it also allowed them to play their own dedicated CD-based games that oh, Nintendo okay. would have no stake in. So it did both. But they yeah. don't have any. They don't have any Nintendo PlayStation exclusive games. Um, at all, right? No, they well they were, when they in the original report and you can see this in Legacy they did say they had like an unlabeled cart and then they also that said like October demo of 1990 and then they also had something else that said like uh, that was a disc but they never ever talked about the disc after that yeah. I, only saw, I only saw that in like two reports so I'm wondering what happened there yeah I'm um, really curious I'm really curious as to what that Nintendo PlayStation game looked yeah. like or like ran as you know. You can imagine it's kind of like the Sega CD, which came out um, around the same time, or like a little bit afterwards, where it it would have enhanced visuals, enhanced music to a cart-based game. It would add that, or it could be just a graphical powerhouse for that generation if they. It really might just look like a PlayStation it. or something. A little bit less, but yeah, the specs were decent. The specs were pretty good. But could it play CDs? Yes, it could. Did Not anybody either. use the CD player function? <laughs> In the PlayStation 1? I remember my brother... Dude, a lot of people uh, did. Yeah. My brother was like, hey, I want to show you guys something to me and my cousin. My cousin's a couple years older than me. And he invited my cousin into his room and said, told me to wait outside. Mm -hmm. And I went around because he had a sliding door that went to the outside, to the backyard. Mm -hmm. And I went to go try to peek. And he got all mad at me. He's like, I was going to show you right after. And it just ended up being the CD player. I'm like, why is he being so fucking secretive? <laughs> uh, my, that's good. My childhood... No, but um, this is, again, uh, go read the Legacy article, but this is very significant, the fact that it even functions and it's still working. That's incredible. Like, it is I incredible. That's it's actually, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Really I want cool. one. Yeah. Let's get yeah. one for Good the luck. office. Someone offered him $45,000. That's what he said Fuck. so far. That's is the that the only job. one in existence? Yeah, uh, it's not the only one in existence. It's the only one that survived the trashing, though, That we, as far as we know. It's the only public one. I wonder so. if we can, if I can get... I just want to recreate it, basically. I wonder how much it would cost to recreate <laughs> really, they it. Opened it. They actually opened it apart and showed all the internals Ooh. and everything, too. And Ooh, it, that's, that's it's hard. Weird. Go look at the internals. It's weird because you could see a Nintendo chip right next to a Sony branded chip. It's just weird to see that combination. Oh, that is weird. Yeah. I'm Isn't sure it? someone out there is going to recreate it, you know, like the way they've <laughs> recreated, like, uh, premium versions of the NES and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, yeah, hey, the analog. Want, we can go steal it and... We might get a lot more traffic to the site. Yeah, I we mean, we might also get a get cease and desist our... letter as well. So oh. I think that's that's not the least that's the least of our worries. I think we're gonna get the cops on our doorstep first. Yeah. <laughs> um, racism. What? Racism. Exactly. How dare yeah, you? Protect racist, minorities. Speaking of racism, I Capcom. See a, I see a, a phallus yeah. on our dump. God damn you, Billy. Speaking of racism, Capcom <laughs> has opened an experiential restaurant in uh, it's called the Capcom Cafe in Japan at Aeon Lake Town Shopping Mall in uh, Koshigaya, and they're opening on November twentieth, the twentieth. According to this GameSpot article, not only will you be able to buy food and drink at the Capcom Cafe, but visitors can buy Capcom merchandise that isn't sold anywhere else and play games on a demo machine. The Capcom Cafe will also feature themed content from time to time to promote upcoming games. The first theme is Monster Hunter X, which launches on 3DS on the 28th. Uh, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, what do you guys think about uh, video game? A weird thing is actually like a publisher-themed cafe. They'd done this actually before um, with, I mm -hmm. think, like Resident Evil 6 they did back in the day where they had giraffe uh, blowjob cakes. No, uh, did you... What? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
I remember that. I got 17 of those. I'm sure you guys understand the giraffe reference. The, the logo, Billy, if you, the web logo of Resident Evil 6 looks like a giraffe getting a blowjob. Oh, oh, my God. I'm going yeah, to look this up. Look, look it up right now. It looks incredible. I'm surprised um, you haven't heard of that. Yeah, that's, that's I can't real. Be, I'm really surprised you to hear about that. It's awesome. No, but they did this with Resident Evil 6. They uh, did this with Monster Hunter in Japan. Uh, it's really popular, but where is this happening again? Is this in, of Japan? It's in Japan in um, in Kashi, Kashigaya in mm. something, in a shopping Yeah, mall. They, they do this pretty often. I'm more I'm more interested in the st- the stage plays uh, that they do, for the Capcom stage plays. Those are bizarre, but I want to hear more about those. Yeah, so moving, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll move on right along here at, at, a, at a breakneck pace. And you guys reported pace. that the Resident Evil stage play is a lot better than expected. The first Resident <laughs> Yeah, the first Resident Evil games. Um, I think this is based on the first one. Let me see. Yeah, it's um. Oh, okay. So the theme, the the play is called Biohazard, and it takes place between Resident Evil Five and Six. Ew. Yeah, it, I don't know. It's not a very good time gap at all. I haven't yeah. played those games. I heard Five is cool, apparently, and Six is yeah, terrible. Yeah, Five's fun. Yeah, Five's no, cool, Six yeah. is just they. It became so schizophrenic in tone that it lost itself. Five mm-hmm. is really fun, not for the co-op. I mean, the co-op experience makes it a lot better, and yeah. it's one of the best co-op experiences of that generation. Oh, yeah, I played, I played co-op with random people online, and it was actually really right. fun. It's super fun, yeah. And so the stage play by, called Biohazard um, has a lot of nods to the actual game. So, like, when they, they when they change scenes, if you've ever been to a play, when they do, like, intermissions and stuff, in mm. this one, Never they have loading play. They have loading screen doors from, like, the early Resident Evil. You know how it's, I like... I love that. Fun. That's so cool. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they have Wait, things do you like, like that. in the door on the stage. I, I guess there's a little video. I didn't I didn't click on the video, but uh, Holy it fails. looks it looks really it looks like a really cool time. Like I kind of want to see it. Um, I don't know where it's at though. If you guys had to have like one stage play of any video game property, what do you think would work well? Or, like, what would you choose? Like. <sighs> what would it be? It would be a musical. It would turn into a musical for yeah, me. Musical. Has to be. I want Bloodborne the musical. <laughs> That'll work. That'd, that'd, be great. that'd be cool. I would. Yeah. I would love Resident. If this Resident Evil play was a, as a musical, it'd be great. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was just stage. thinking of like something like Repo the Genetic Opera, but for Resident Evil. That's fantastic. Actually, that's a great movie. Like Nemesis comes on, and they're like Nemesis, Nemesis. <laughs> what are you doing the audience. So the uh, the Biohazard. Stage play. It's only in Japan. It was a limited one-week run uh, right before Halloween, oh, and the story up. takes place uh, between five and six, as we just said. But it also features Rebecca Chambers, Chris Chris Redfield, and Piers Niv- Nivans. Evans? I don't know. I don't even know who any of these people are. But <laughs> um, it's not canon. It says, uh, or they don't it's, know. It's they're not sure. It's just for fun, apparently. And they basically say it's a sudden and apparently unpredicted bioterrorism incident, zombie outbreak, occurs in an Australian Yeah. And in an Australian university where Chambers is now a teacher. Fortunately, Redfield and his anti bioterror unit are already on their way there due to rumors of someone experimenting with leftover tyrant virus. And yes, it's the crazy guy in the lab coat who also happens to have taken an unhealthy interest in one of the university's most gifted and weirdest students. Oh yeah. 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 You know, it looks. If I'm, well, I'm looking at the pictures. The guy in the left-hand corner, the bottom, in the suit. It looks like that motherfucker's behind everything. The old guy. Yeah. It looks. He looks like he's like. Yeah, I know what I did, but you don't. Yeah, and <laughs> and then the guy, in the guy right on top of his frame, looks like he's from a Final Fantasy game. But he is. Wait, which guy? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he's totally from 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 fifteen. Ju- yeah, judging from, I'm gonna put the the photo up on the cast. I like how I like how uh, felt the Chris actor is by the way, because Chris, if you guys have seen him, he has boulders for arms as muscles. He's and this guy's like huge. a super scrawny little like. Uh, That's guy. the thing. Who is supposed to be Chris in this? The guy in the top. It's the guy in the BSAA outfit. The one. Well, there's two of them. There's the one guy in the top. Oh, the, I don't know. Top, the guy in the top. top guy. Yeah. That's his he looks okay. a little That's bit good. more badass. The guy in the bottom looks like he's resting his hand on his hip. And he's like going. Yeah. <laughs> Leon looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. I'd actually Leon. He's my husbando now. Is your uh, is your bae? He's your my bay. Don't All tell right. CP. Who's, who's the on. bottom girl? Of course you pin pin out the the bottom girl. <laughs> oh, that's Rachel. 
That's oh, uh, yeah. that's I don't know who that is. That's Rachel. Yeah. Who's I the? I don't care who she is. She who's... can do whatever to me. Oh my. Uh, who's the um? <laughs> who's that one girl that helps you in Resident Evil Four? That's Rachel. Uh, damn it. God. You get that... to play as her. Uh, I... in, in, in like bonus. Wait, missions. are you talking about the girl that you protect the entire game? No, 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 not Ashley. Ashley. What's her okay, face? Okay. The other, the other agent. The that... non-human one. Oh, Cunningham. Cunningham. Pretty sure. Maybe. Isn't it? Pretty sure it's know. Cunningham, Agent Cunningham. Mm. Maybe it's Huntingham. I don't know. Let me just Hunting, Huntingham. Huntingham. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you know the, the name screen. of the of the uh, the other Resident Evil Four playable character, let us know in the comments below. We'll send you something stupid. Oh, are you talking about Ada? Yes. You're talking about Ada, Ada Wong. Wong. There you go. Never mind. You don't get it anymore because we figured it out. You. Yeah. Well, maybe <laughs> that, that maybe that Sorry, girl be a bite. I was yeah, thinking that girl was Ada, but maybe not. Yeah, That's no, I was just thinking Wong, because her last name is Wong, isn't it? Yeah, it's Ada Wong. Ada Wong, yeah. She was cool. I liked her a lot. Even though my I friend's never last name was Wong. I never finished that game. My friend's but, last name is Wong. Yeah, but my friend's last name starts with an H. Well, the, my friend starts with an H as well. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have next? We have yeah, next. What uh, what's, your last, what's your last name? What? What's my last name? My last name is Gonzalez. I don't Did know you if you're it? lying. Okay, what's happening? We're, okay, okay, we're at Konami We're going to move on to the next topic here. All right, Konami. here's your daily dose of Konami. You yeah. always need this. Konami Minute with Hayden Robel. Yeah, Konami Minute. It's going to be like more like five, knowing me. Uh, Konami confirms the closure of Kojima Productions LA, so it's about time they actually confirmed it. If you look at the report, if Billy doesn't block the Google Doc... Um, Block it. Okay. I'm breaking everything. <laughs> Konami, if you guys didn't know, Konami actually opened up for Resident or Resident Evil. <laughs> for Resident <laughs> Evil 5. For Metal Gear Solid 5, they opened up their own office to work on the multiplayer in, in LA. They, they opened up an American branch called Kojima Productions LA. Well, obviously with all the Konami controversy, they ended up um, renaming it, rebranding it after Konami uh, parted ways with Kojima, or apparently went on vacation with Kojima. On vacation forever. Yeah, they put you on vacation, extended vacation, everyone. Uh, he'll be back. But no, they're assholes. They must have closed it while he was gone in that in Hawaii because now he's going to come back to this empty warehouse, which was renamed Konami LA, which is really funny too. They 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 had to rename it before they closed it. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is just sad, and a lot of people. I think like it's a loss of forty jobs or something like that, which is a heavy it, amount of gaming jobs. So is yeah. the renaming to like I don't make it le make less press or something? Like, cause what was if, that? Well, because if they closed it while it was named Kojima Production, by renaming it, does it like, I don't know. Uh, it they just it, I mean it goes with the controversy that they're renaming everything that had Kojima's label on it. You know, uh, like they're just trying to wipe out his name while he's gone it, on vacation. It's just petty help. at that point. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just it's just twisted. Like he's in Hawaii. Like guys, he's gonna come back. Don't worry. What, what, um, wait, where would he go? Would he go to yeah. Hawaii? Is that uh, where he would take vacation? I don't think so. Uh -huh. to, like the ocean. Probably go to like uh, he'd visit the the Nintendo World Store in in New York. <laughs> and he'd go he'd go to, he'd go to SAC and watch a Kings game. And uh, I don't think he's gonna go to SAC for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's not gonna go to SAC. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's Billy. gonna. He's also gonna go to uh, to New Orleans to get some uh, New Orleans. Uh, uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans. Uh, crab cake. Honestly, yeah. I would love to go to New Orleans. No, I honestly think he'll, he won't go anywhere. He'll just, like, maybe he'll order an instant pizza room. and go watch yeah. He's going to go to... He's, he's probably going to go to L.A. and hang out with Kiefer Sutherland. He's going to hang out with Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, he's, he's going to be like... They're going to make monkey faces together. They're going to keep making the game and never release it. They're yeah. going to make 12 like, monkeys together. You know what? Yeah. How fucking mean would that be? We made the game and nobody gets it. Billy's shaking his head as we all, like, go into random tangents as usual. I don't know. But no, I really hope they land jobs. Uh, they were very talented. I didn't play very much of MGO at all, but it was better than any other online offering for Metal Gear. So, so. good. It was so good. Yeah. I stopped playing it because I don't have time, but it was really good. It it's was sad. Super... It's sad to see what Konami's doing these days. It's terrible. But... Yeah, it was super... Um, MGO is, like, unbalanced. God, the stealth the stealth infiltrator guys were just so fucking OP because they can just <laughs> go invisible, walk behind you, mm -hmm. and just slit your throat. It was terrible. But, you know. I felt okay. like Steven was whacking his head with a cup. I did, I did pretty well, but um, mm -hmm. you know, another thing. Speaking of Konami and Kojima, there is. I'm trying to pull up this photo, so let me, give me some time here. But the no, Game Awards, you don't, you don't have any time. 
The Game Awards 2015 is set yes. for December 3rd, and mm-hmm. there was one photo. It showed like the guest list, and it showed like showed like, Phil Spencer. It, it said Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, Microsoft, yeah. and like Eve's Gimo, CEO of Ubisoft, mm-hmm. Ubisoft, yeah. and then it says it says Kojima. Nothing underneath his name. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. he's he's definitely not on vacation. He's not associated with Konami anymore. I think. He and Jeff Keighley are really tight. Like he, that's where they revealed uh, Jeff Key Pain originally. Jeff Key. Jeff Key. Hey, G- Game G-K. Awards. Really quick uh, review of last year's first Game Awards. I thought it was pretty good. It was, I dope. It was like they did a good job last year. It was just cut to the point, concise. Not too much celebrity stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I liked that the No Man's um, Sky, Sean Murray, not Chad Michael Murray, yeah. Sean Murray came out and talked about No Man's <laughs> Sky, and he was like, you can zoom out, this is the world, and you can, yeah. you can. this is where you are, and this is the galaxy, but it's not, no, that's not accent. all of it, you can zoom out, and yeah, you can zoom out, and here's the bigger thing, you can zoom out even more, and like, here's the bigger <laughs> thing, you keep on zooming out, and this is the entire fucking universe, and you're trying to get to the middle, and everybody, I was like, oh... We and talked I about that on Saturday. Out, and it'll be like a JPEG in Blade Runner. Remember, remember Hayden, we talked about that on Saturday about No Man's Sky and just like, so you can go to anywhere. It's like, yeah, we know. Yeah. We know we can do that. And it's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Yo, good job, uh, Sean Murray. Uh, Furman and I and uh, a good guy at 8bitchimp.com, or yeah, we are plugging them, uh, from, uh, his name is Jeremy Winslow. We talked about how... Jay Wynn? Jer- yeah, Jay Wynn. Uh, That'd be cool. That hey, cool. he should do that. Yeah. We, we just gave you a name. Come on. Uh, Jeremy Winslow. It's free. Into our podcast. First one's no. free. <laughs> First one's always free. We should start <laughs> Be A Bike Consulting. I, I think we should just be Be A Bike Consulting instead. Of, uh, be A Bike General. Consulting Group, LLC. Yeah. No, uh, I'm sick of seeing... Yeah. Are you sick of seeing this game yet? I, I want the game to just come out, and it's or, it's not coming out for another year, so I don't know how I feel about that. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Wait. 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 I'm excited. What? I want to play the game. <laughs> Excited. What so Hayden? What about Shuhei Yoshida and what does PSVR stand oh, for? Oh right, right, right. So a report came out from uh, DigitalSpy.com where the where Shuhei Yoshida, who's handling obviously is the president of Worldwide Studios for Sony, talked about how they're trying to price the PSVR not to make money on it. If that sounds like the most anti-businessman thing you've ever heard, it's actually not because if you think about it, the PlayStation is built upon this foundation of them making money from software. So they basically announced that, yes, we're trying to price it at an affordable price, which they need to do, but they are still treating it like a separate ecosystem. So it's like, at the same time, I, I don't, I, something I don't trust Sony, I don't feel like I trust the components being cheap enough to where we can get it for lower than 150 you know what I mean? Like, we need to get it in that price range. We need to get it in that 200 to 150 price range. It needs to be, at most, but, the PS Vita's price, or it's going to fail at the PS Vita. But this is, like, so. falling into the same thing with, like, when Blu-ray came out. It's, like, this brand new technology mm. so, to expect it to be so little and then expect this, like, high-quality product where it is yeah. a new ecosystem. Mm-hmm. It'll take time to get to that point, I think. I think, but if in order for adoption to happen and for it not to be a gimmick, then they need to have it, like, priced. I mean, to buy it, you true. Know? It's, it's true. Yeah. It can't be, like, 600 or whatever. Like Rumors are it's 400 to 500. That's, that's but, not really prominent but, rumors. That's what it seems like all of them are at this point right now. Mm-hmm. Do you think that these companies are just tone deaf and they have no idea what's going on? It's not that they're tone deaf. They want to provide the price that they can and make the money they can, but they just realize like it's not going to work out. It's it's too early. It's, we're, we're, but, this is, these are the first steps in a VR. So. I mean, they mm-hmm. also don't really know because like, who knows what's going to happen with this. Like, You can prepare and prepare and prepare and then... Mm-hmm. Who the fuck knows? Then the I think be, it's like a cool gimmick. I just don't know how long it's going to last. I just, I, I want it to be successful, and I want it to be a, maybe cool, a cool new experience that mm-hmm. that provides like a new type of way to play games. But at the same time, I, I can't help but feel like it's just going to be like an extra well, thing, you know? If you, yeah, I could totally, I totally feel you. It has to be like an accessory, or it, 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 the thing is, they're not trying to sell it like an accessory. They're trying to sell it as its own ecosystem, its own console, essentially, but it has to have connection with the PS4, ironically. Yeah, you need um, to have a $400 machine yeah. to play this <laughs> right. $400. It's potentially a $1,000 investment if that thing is like the equivalent of a PS4 price. Yeah. Plus, if you, can, if you look in the article, there's people using the PlayStation Move to... Oh, with, man, well, that, that must be like $2 now to go buy somewhere at a garage sale. Yeah, um, but that's still <laughs> two more dollars, dude. I Damn just, it. I just like some of the uh, possibilities with it, even like the medical possibilities, like eyesight. Mm-hmm. 
uh, like reading into how I could probably improve my eyesight by using VR. I, you know, we didn't get the chance to try at uh, Day of the Devs uh, PSVR, but we saw it. We got to see it. That's the first time I've ever seen it publicly being demoed to public mm -hmm. people. So that was really cool. God, Hayden, you're so fucking professional. Speaking of Day of the Devs, <laughs> how, how was it? How was Day of the Devs, which happened on Saturday, at uh, presented by Double Fine and what was it I am A Bit? Yes. Yeah, it was Pete Chill. Pretty sure it's yeah. I am Ape It and like also like fifty other people. 50 yeah. Other sponsors, yeah. It was really good. I, I w enjoyed it more than last year. I actually went to Day of the Devs last year. Much smaller. This one was huge. There were so many people, right, Furman? Too many yeah, people. There were like three people, dude. Oh well, okay, shit. No, no, That's no. Awesome. It was big. There were a lot of people. It was really cool. Um We were near we were in like an SF dock. It was weird. Yeah, we but, were by the pier. Yeah, we were by the piers. Was it and, like uh, Fort, was it like Fort Mason? No, it was um, what was it? Furman, like the exact location, you know. It's near well, it was it's Marin long. Street. I remember that. <laughs> it's called the Midway. It's basically a place where they said we are a uh, an empty space for the creative arts. This was I think they kind of advertised it as. So, mm -hmm. uh oh, is Billy dead? Bye, Billy. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, uh, but hey, Furman. Yeah. Day of the Devs, what stuck out to you the most? Because we played a lot of um, games. Well, we didn't play too many games. We didn't get the chance to play Tacoma or like a Drifts, and we didn't get to play the big no, ones. But sorry. The, the games that all the games we played were great. Yeah, they were. They Literally were every single game I played, which was like a couple, <laughs> were really really <laughs> great. Like five probably to get together. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, I, I was not disappointed with any of those games. They all felt no. like once they're a little bit more polished, of course, that I'm gonna buy them right away. Um. What's one of the games you played? What stuck out uh, to you the most? Like, what's your number one? Well, you could list number the one. Ah, shit, it might. I think we're gonna have the same number one. Is it real? I mean, probably, probably, yeah. That's Gambit. Yeah, Death Gambit for sure. That's Gambit. Yeah, that was uh -huh. fucking great. What is yeah. what is Death Death Gambit? It Death Gambit is essentially Castlevania Bloodborne making a baby in a two D format. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it, it it's it's just Disgusting. it's a really pretty Disgusting. game. That's just a gross, yeah. like, orgy thing. <laughs> no, it was a beautiful orgy. You were not there. It's fucking undead hands and mm. squishy noises and uh, scythes and and hats, fedoras and, and everything. Hey, I did Hayden, see one guy. Did, did Hayden, Random like, stuff. freeze? Because look at Hayden's photo. It's hilarious. That's how it usually looks. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he didn't do Are you guys there? Are you alive? Oh, hey, there he is. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not making fun of you at all. Um, <laughs> no, I thought that my internet entirely crashed, which it did. So everything's back. Holy yeah, shit, dude. Death, Death Scam, it does look crazy. Doesn't it look yeah, fantastic? It, it, is, it is a cool game. You're like, I was looking at this 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 gif where the um, dude's like climbing up crashed. this massive golem thing. Oh yeah, we didn't get to Very, do that. Hayden, but... Man, Hayden's so like uh, fucking derped right now. Yeah, he's a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Hello again, my friend. I heard derped. I heard, oh. I heard derped. So. Oh. oh. Am I alive? Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I think if you want to, if you want to continue. Um. Um. So what? Okay, Death's Gambit is the premise: is you're reanimated by death to fight the immortal gods of an alien medieval planet. So that should sell you alone. Bye, Luke. <laughs> this is so that sold you alone. This is so fucking sick. Yeah, yeah, and it and it handles really well. You've got like the dodging and the rolling kind of like you have in um in Bloodborne or Dark Souls, mm -hmm. and it makes for really lively combat. And you have some those those big enemies will fuck you up. No, we you have to use like it. strategy. You have to pace your timing mm -hmm. of your blocks. There's stamina. You can break your stances pretty often, and it's just it's punishing in the best kind of way of a Souls game where you um you know exactly where you did what you did wrong, and yeah, it's, yeah. There there is actually being you noticed, and I'll put this. I am making a preview by the way, so you could expect a video preview eventually, sometime this week, hopefully. Um, be it firm.